Hey guys, John Lee Dumas here, founder and host of EO Fire, and you're listening to Bravepreneur Parents Academy with Balaji O. Welcome to Bravepreneur Parents Academy, where the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs reveal their most defining childhood moments and share their legacy for raising brave little heroes who will grow up to change the world. And now, he still reads comic books under the blanket at bedtime. Please welcome your host, best-selling author, award-winning speaker, and self-confessed geek dad, Balaji O. You know, like the hotel in Vegas? Yeah, no, that's really his name. Balaji Welcome back, Bravepreneur family. Today, I have a treat for you. We're getting to talk to the man behind Recurring Revenues Podcast. The man is Dean Patino. Dean helps entrepreneurs create market, and sell subscription products. He also manages Fire Nation Elite, the exclusive mastermind in partnership with John Lee Dumas. Dean is my go-to guy on all things recurring revenue. Dean practices what he preaches with his own recurring revenue product, Dollar Baseball Club. So you guys, if you don't have recurring revenue in your business, you're about to get the keys to the kingdom, baby. Please help me welcome to Brand for Nor Nation, Mr. D. Patino. Welcome, D. Oh, well, thanks so much, Malaji. What an intro. Wow. Okay, I'm ready to go. All right, bud. Dean is fired up. Dean is one of my mentors. He keeps me on the straight and narrow on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, I owe him a couple of deliverables. I'm launching a couple of things in the next few weeks, and Dean is a main reason why I'm going to get them out on time. Today, though, Dean, you're going to be helping us out with recurring revenue or subscription revenue. So, Dean, take, start us from the beginning. What is this concept of subscription revenue, and why should entrepreneurs really be thinking hard about it? Well, subscription revenue, thanks for having me on the show, Blasi. It's such a, a treat to be with you, speaking of treats. So, uh, and oh boy, we have Halloween around the corner, so with the trick or treat. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. and, okay, so first of all, uh, subscription revenue really is that, that automatic payday that you can count on, the revenue coming in for some type of product and or service that you're offering uh, to your customers. So, it's so important to, to, to receive this because it's a revenue stream or revenue streams that give you predictability in running your business. So you know how much inventory to, to maintain, to, uh, to have on hand, to bring in, you know, the, the types of time that is committed uh, based on the subscriptions that are out there. In, in terms of the services that you're providing. So in terms of running a business, this is this lifetime uh, customer value is so important uh, for businesses to be successful. And recurring revenue is the best way to be able to measure that. So, so you can look at your business and see how much you can count on uh, from a, a profitability perspective and run your business that way. Now, the other thing, and I, I noticed this when I started really studying deeper into what's going on behind recurring revenue, which, by the way, is the hottest revenue model for entrepreneurs out there in the world today by wow, far. Wow. It is on fire hot. There's more. I say that because there's more people subscribing to offers today than ever before, and it continues to grow. So here's why it's so important, though. For anybody that's tuning in who uh, is an entrepreneur, wants to be an entrepreneur, whether you have recurring revenue or not, this is why it's so important. When I look back and I studied the Forbes list of the wealthiest people in the world, mm -hmm. I went through the first one, the second one, the fourth one, the tenth one, the fiftieth one. Time and time again, they had recurring revenue in their business, every single one of them. And when I looked at other very popular entrepreneurs who are doing extremely well, and I'm talking about six-figure-a-month entrepreneurs, and in some cases, believe it or not, seven-figure-a-month entrepreneurs earning that kind of revenue, 
Each and every one of them have a recurring revenue model. So you look at the pattern, you look at the consistency, that's what the common denominator is. They all have that in their business model, recurring revenue. In other words, subscriptions that they're they're offering to their customers uh, in exchange, again, for some type of product or service. That's why it's so important. So if you want to generate a lot of income, then you'll want to have recurring revenue in your business. Wow, wow. that is mind-blowing. I had no idea. I've known about subscription revenue for a while, but I had no idea it was that much of a linchpin for some of the wealthiest people and businesses in the world. Now, Dean, what are some common subscriptions that folks are probably paying for today that can really help illustrate uh, how how common subscriptions are becoming in our lives? Well, Blondie, subscriptions are dated to go back to even the 1600s. They've been around a long, Whoa. long time. It's just because of the online world, they've just exploded because of what can be offered out there and the flexibility that companies have. So, I mean, when we talk about what kind of subscriptions can, can be offered, well, we've all been accustomed to them for, for many decades, which is why people are so comfortable with purchasing products in this regard. I mean, magazines are subscriptions, of course, um, phone companies, you know, any of the utilities out there are gas bills, of course, mortgage payments. I mean, it goes on and on, right? Car payments. I mean, these are all things that we're subscribing to, so to speak, uh, and then uh, sending in those monthly checks, payments online uh, in exchange for uh, the, the typical types of things that we want in our lives. But then you look at what's been going on in in the recent online world, and let's say recent over the last five to ten years or so, now there's all kinds of offers out there for subscriptions. So it's hard to say which ones are the most popular because there's you can do subscriptions for really just about anything today, um, from co- offering coaching to memberships to uh, digital products to subscription boxes, which are red hot right now, and mainstream. When you have a presidential candidate offering subscription boxes, you know it's mainstream. So uh, there's so many ways to to generate recurring revenue from subscriptions. It, it just the list goes on and on. Oh, wow, you you hit on a number of very hot button topics. We're gonna dive into a few of those real quick. I'm not letting you off the hot seat, Dean. I want you to really really give us that value that you're teasing us with here. So if I'm an entrepreneur and okay, I get it. Subscription revenue is valuable. I, I'd love to add this to my business, but but I'm so busy, Dean. Let's talk through some of these so I can really understand which ones I can get started with. So say, for example, coaching. How can coaching be offered in a subscription model? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can go about, about it with coaching. I mean, the, the simplest one to me is offering coaching in a method that people can subscribe to and they're getting coaching where it's offline, so to speak. So via email, uh, I've seen this, this is, the, this is uh, something that's, that's fairly popular where you offer this coaching capability where people can submit questions um, and then you provide answers to them via email. You also can provide some type of guides for them that you create, some kind of training products uh, with those that uh, maybe are like a, a PDF of something, this this is a one of the recurring uh, subscription offers that I uh, offer today. So it's called the Recurring Revenue Concierge, and with that, you get offline coaching. So answer any questions that you have all via email. You also get a monthly guide that walks you through step by step of how to create and implement a subscription offer in a business. So. Uh, that's one way to do it. Of course, uh, you know, coaching, you can do it live as well. You can have those monthly Skype calls that you do with uh, with your customers. Uh, and, again, still give them access to some type of other key information you have. Most people, when it comes to coaching, really, um, well, a lot of them want accountability. But more than that, they want somebody to tell them exactly how to do something mm-hmm. or somebody that's been there and done that. Uh, mm-hmm. So coaching is certainly – one that can be offered. There's so many coaches out there today, and, and life coaches. I mean, it, again, when it comes to coaching, it, it's a good model to use for recurring revenue. And and you can offer it in a, in a way that's monthly. You can offer it on a quarterly basis. Uh, 
Um, so you know, I've seen them offered on an annual basis. Uh, you know, depends on, of course, the kind of coaching that, that's being offered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you really bring up some valuable points there. And I know that when I first started getting into paying for coaching, even as an entrepreneur, Dean is one of my coaches, as I've mentioned. When I first started getting into paying for coaching, I had to actually transition. I had to almost become a different person or a different entrepreneur because prior to making that first coaching payment, I think it was $97 a month the first time I did it, I did not see why somebody would pay for coaching. I mean, goodness, you have the Internet. Every piece of information that you could possibly want is at your fingertips. What I didn't realize, though, at the time, Dean, was I didn't value my time as much as I should have. So for the folks who are listening, you probably have a number of people in your community, on your email list, visiting your website, who value, they value their money more than their time. They don't want to have to pay for something that they can search and comb over the Internet to find. But you will have a few people that are so busy, they would rather pay an expert to ask their exact question and get the exact answer. It's the difference between going to WebMD (laughs) to find out what that ache or pain you have is versus just going to a doctor. I mean, does that kind of uh, make sense with with what you're talking about? Yeah, it makes perfect sense, Balaji. And uh, when when people are valuing uh, money over time, um, that's where they get into the crux of then spending a lot of time, which is ultimately costing a lot more money uh, you know, in the long run and even in the short term, because it, when you have a coach, I mean, coaches, of course, that's like a whole nother topic we could dive into. But uh, coaches look at the most popular, famous athletes in the world. They all have coaches. I mean, you look at successful business. Tony Robbins has a coach. I mean, just, uh, you know, people have coaches for all kinds of things. And that's, of course, to help them shortcut that time. I'm sure the information is out there today, and, and it doesn't mean you need to coach for every single thing in your life. But when you have something that's really important to you and you want to get that, that help and you want to get it uh, sooner rather than later, you want to get it from, from a coach. Uh, and also you're going to get their specific expertise, and, and plus you can bounce questions uh, back and forth with them. So anyway, coaching is really popular, uh, will continue to be popular. And, and, and again, Robert Kiyosaki, I mean, just, you know, Anybody that is successful in life, they have coaches in their lives to help them. Very, very good examples, Dane. Uh, Let's talk about membership sites next. So everybody knows about membership sites. We all get the model, but folks might be a little hesitant. They might feel like they're not ready to create a uh, membership site yet. They don't have enough content. How can people get going very quickly with a membership site and start earning that recurring revenue? Well, I get that question a lot, Balaji, and and a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs want to create membership sites, and uh, it's not rocket science, but but then again, if it was so easy, everybody would have their own (laughs) site, right, with paid subscribers. So there is a model to follow, though, for that, and and for what I've seen – in running a mastermind now for a number of years, or well, for a little over a year, but being involved in one for a number of years, is that there's really three essential things to to have a membership site, you know, mastermind, whatever we'd like to call it. But one is that people want to have things done for them uh, because they don't have the time, so they want they want that to to occur. They also in a membership site. So again, to get things done for them, um, they also want to know how to do things. So there's certain things they want to do, and they want to know how to do it. And then the third thing is they're looking for that community to get a sense of uh, engagement, feedback, accountability. So in a membership site to start, I mean, to me, it revolves around those three things. But most membership sites only offer two or even one of them. You know, for example, some membership sites only offer the accountability and the engagement of the community, but they aren't offering the the how to do something part or the get it done for you part. Uh, but I would say that, that most membership sites offer two of the three. Very rarely do I see three of the three um, all together. And there's a lot of value in any one of them, but when you add all three together, that's what I would look to do for starting a paid membership site is, first of all, what it, value you're going to offer in those three ways. Uh, and then, of course, it's a matter of the kind of platform. And as, as far as the the platform to use for the community part, to me, that's really simple. It's Facebook. I mean, many have tried forums and other things and other places, and they still exist today, but 
Facebook groups are so popular, having a private Facebook group, that's definitely the way to go. There's over a billion people in Facebook today, so uh, no sense of trying to to uh, fight City Hall here, as they say. And just right. have your community based on that, and then you can uh, provide resources through a, a website. It would be nice to have it all in one, but that's just been the best model. So a lot of people, you can have just your Facebook group as your membership site and nothing else. Um and include some of the resources within it. So, it, again, all depends on what you want to accomplish. But to start it, to me, it revolves around those three things in a model um, that you're going to provide value for your, uh, you know, for the, the members that you're going to have. And then, then you start looking at the, the kind of content and connections you're going to have within that membership site. Excellent. Love that. And actually, one of the ways that I found Dean was through a membership site. It was through John Lee Dumas's Podcasters Paradise, which I believe has over 2,500 paying members, uh, paying about $97 a month. So Dean absolutely knows what he's talking about with this formula here. Okay, let's jump to subscription boxes, which Dean has told us is red hot. Dean, give us the business right now. Why are subscription boxes so hot? Give us some examples of which the hottest ones are, and how can we get started? Well, the, the subscription boxes are so popular today because – People can have something delivered to their home, and who, who doesn't love getting something delivered to their home, um, at a really uh, low cost, uh, typically. Typically saying by really low cost, it could be anywhere from like Dollar Shave Club, which is earning so much. They, they are earning so much. They're number two now in the razor market, which is just amazing from where they came from, which was only a few years ago. So you can have uh, razor blades delivered to your home every month for as low as $3. Um, but then again, there's some subscription boxes that are $100 or more. So Birch Box is really popular. Again, they were one, probably the the one that most people talk about is Birch Box. And they have two different kinds of subscription boxes. One is for women. It's cosmetics. So it's uh, beauty supplies. So they get they provide different samples of lipstick and other kinds of makeup. Uh, and it's a, a surprise every month of what you get, which is a, which that model works really well in the subscription uh, box area. And that's now I think that price is about ten dollars a month or so for that box. So that's what I mean by it's again very affordable. The men's subscription box they have a grooming one for men, so you're going to get shaving cream and cologne and th- things like that, samples like that in your box. And I believe the men's is about nineteen dollars a month. So, but it's the convenience of being able to get these kinds of products to your, delivered to your home, and again, at a, typically a very affordable price for folks. Um, and these companies are earning, I mean, there's billions of dollars in the subscription market today, billion, subscription box market today, that is, billions of dollars. It's, it's absolutely incredible, uh, the growth for it, Balaji. And as far as how to get started, well, uh, again, it's, you, you and this is it's so funny because the subscription box model is no different than any other kind of business, be it a transactional product that you're selling, you know, one off or a subscription. You have to provide unique business value in whatever it is that your business is going to be doing. That's the secret to success besides serving your customers well. Because when you stand out above the competition, then and you're solving uh, a pain for someone, providing more pleasure, typically it's solving a pain better than anybody else, well, you're going to be in great shape. You're going to be in great shape to do a lot of business. So with that wow. subscription box, yeah, you want to have something that, so, so that, that that nobody else is providing in the market, or if they're providing it, you're doing it better, faster, and or cheaper than them. So just Dollar Baseball Club, uh, I created that product, which is a uh, a, a baseball board game that my customers get every month, and they can order any Major League Baseball teams. They get their player cards they get, any Major League Baseball teams from 1901 to the present. Now, nobody's offering a ba- uh, any kind of a baseball game as a subscription box today, nobody, um, let alone have that kind of flexibility where – Customers can select, baseball fans in this case, can select any kind of teams they want. So it really, again, gives that's an example of a unique business value. So nobody's offering a subscription box that does it. Nobody's offering any teams, that, which means they can get essentially any players from Major League Baseball history from 1901 to the present. Plus, 
I also include a different kind of surprise in each box that they get every month, something that a baseball fan would really appreciate. So, uh, again, when it comes to subscription boxes, uh, and I would go to CrateJoy.com if I were your okay, customers. Okay. They have a ton of resources there about what to do, how to start one out. I mean, it's just uh, everything is right there. Um, their blog, just go to their blog at CrateJoy.com. That's C-R-A-T-E-J-O-Y.com. And uh, you'll get everything you need right there to get started. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we know exactly what the jumping off point is. If we want to get more into subscription boxes, I am actually building something myself with Dean's um, mentoring that you guys will hear about very shortly. So trust me, membership sites, subscription boxes, and coaching, these are all things that you can get going within the next month, 30 to 45 days. Definitely make some progress in one of these areas. Okay, before we let Dean go, because he's on a tight time schedule, we got to put him through the lightning round. Dean, are you ready to go through that real quick? I'm ready to go, but Blanche, may I, may just, I just want to make one other suggestion about the subscription boxes, and then let's dive into that lightning round. And that is that I definitely suggest that you mirror somebody else's subscription box site that you really like. It doesn't mean copy it word for word, but mirror the look and feel for it. So when you go to dollarshaveclub.com and you look at dollarbaseballclub.com, you'll see that I mirrored their site. So you're going to, and mirroring's been going around forever, for decades, all kinds of businesses. So again, you want to take a look at somebody else's success and mirror after that. And so when it comes to subscription box, do the same thing in particular, in particular with their website. So that will save you a lot of time, a lot of money. And at CreateJoy.com, you'll see all kinds of subscription boxes. I mean, if, even if you did a search, and the, the term subscription boxes gets about 40,000 hits a month. It's absolutely insane. That's how hot that is. Um, so it gets even more than the word subscription. So anyway, I just wanted to leave that last little tip there about subscription boxes. Just go ahead and mirror after another one that you already like. It'll just save you a lot of time. And you'll see, again, when you go to dollarbaseballclub.com, dollarshaveclub.com, you'll see what I mean by mirroring. Okay, Flashy. Excellent. 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 That's, That's a very, very, very good tip. Pro tip there. All right, Dean, we're putting you through the lightning round. So we need you to take us back. To your childhood, Dean. Tell us what your favorite TV show was growing up. Andy Griffith, for sure. Very nice. I used to watch that, too. Favorite superhero? It'd have to be Superman, because Superman can fly. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with that. Favorite family tradition? Uh, we had pizza on Friday nights. That was That was always good. Nice. We still do that. Okay, what was the most embarrassing moment for you as a child, Dean? Oh, gosh. How much time do we have left? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, the most embarrassing moment. Um, ooh. I, I don't know. I mean, I can't really say that one comes to mind off the top of my head. I know this is the lightning round, but mm, I guess I'm kind of lucky. I didn't really have any major embarrassing moment as a child growing up. So, All right. We're going to call your wife and verify that. <laughs> that be my ex-wife. <laughs> Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, she'll give us some really good stuff. <laughs> so, Dean, you are a father as well. How many kids do you have and how old are they? Well, three grown children, um, which are great. I'm very blessed to, to be a father of them. So uh, a son who will be turning 29 in a couple of days and then a daughter who's 24 and one who's 19. Wow, fantastic. Kind of looking back, what are some memories you have from the younger years of your kids? What what are some things that kind of stand out for you even after your kids are now grown and, and off doing their own thing? Well, any type of uh, school events with them were always special to be able to go and support them in those school events. Uh, my kids were, uh, besides sports, uh, soccer and baseball, things like that, they also were in a lot of uh, – of the music programs and musicals and things like that. So those were always really special moments to share with them. Mm. That's nice. That's nice. I love that. And I believe they still live fairly close to home, so you're able to see them uh, pretty regularly. Oh, yes, yes. So my son is happily married to his college sweetheart, and they have the same birthday. So they have uh, blessed me with two granddaughters. So uh, wow. see them. And then, yeah, my my uh, my two daughters, I see them often as well. Excellent, excellent. What would you say was and continues to be your number one job as dad? 
Uh, I believe it's to be a supportive uh, role model for them. So to live by example and and uh, the things that I'd like them to have as great values uh, and ethics in their life to, to live that way and, and demonstrate that for them and, and, and be supportive of their dreams. I mean, I see it as really a, those two are my two top roles there for them to let them know they can do anything they put their minds to that they want to do. I love it. I love it. I love it. Folks, we've been talking to Mr. Dean Patino, one of my coaches and mentors. Dean helps entrepreneurs like you create, market, and sell subscription products. So he's my go-to guy. I'm sharing him with you. Now he's going to be your go-to guy. If you don't have subscription revenue in your business yet, I'm giving you a 30-day challenge. You guys need to get on it. Subscribe to Dean's list. You can go to deanpatino.com. That's Dean, P-A-T-I-N-O.com. Dean, thank you so much. Well, actually, what a, it's such a pleasure to be here with you. And I'll tell you, for your audience, they are very wise because they're tuning into your podcast. Your enthusiasm, your wisdom – I mean, you've got the personality you have, such a positive attitude, Blasi, you've got it all going on. So I strongly encourage your audience to continue to tuning into your podcast and, and everything else that you do in your business as well. You're doing great things, Blasi. So thanks so much for this great opportunity to be with you. Oh, man, I need to get you on my recordings more often. He's never nice to me in accountability meetings. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Dean. I really appreciate that. Very kind words from the mentor, Dean Patino. All right, guys, go to deanpatino.com. Start growing your subscription revenue. I'm very excited to hear how you're doing about that. Until tomorrow, ladies and gents, it's up, up, and away. Thanks for supporting my dad's show. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to iTunes. He said hot chocolate is for closers. If you don't subscribe, I don't get hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. Fear not. Although this chapter of Bravepreneur Parents Academy has come to its conclusion, we have many more adventures for you and your brave little heroes. Head over to BraveQuest.me for access to the BraveQuest Journal, an interactive activity playbook that rewards your little ones with points for accomplishing tasks that build character and unleash your child's inner superhero all before bedtime. We look forward to having you join us for more adventures next time on Bravepreneur Parents Academy.